Hi, I'm Celeste, and welcome to Find Your Purple. Today is day 30 of my 40 days of reflection. And the comment today is kind of embarrassing because maybe it's something everyone else picked up on and I was the only one that missed it. But I grew up in the Catholic Church, and at the time they were teaching you had to be Catholic to go to heaven. And I remember thinking, and I'm sure I voiced it because I did ask questions a lot at some point, if Jesus was Jewish, why is it the Catholics were the only ones going to heaven? You know, I just wasn't making the connection on how that came to be. And I really didn't understand anything about the circumcision and how that fit in. I didn't understand that Israel is really a part of the entire world's history and what happens with Israel is and should be of interest to everyone. Uh, so none of that made sense. Now I did remember the stories of whether it's Noah and Jonah and David and Solomon and Samson and Gideon and Noah and Moses and Abraham. I mean, I knew all of those basic stories, so it's not like somehow I wasn't hearing it, but I just didn't, I didn't understand why Jesus was Jewish and yet Christians were saying they were going to heaven and Jews weren't. So, so anyway, as I read the Bible, it became very clear, obviously, that it is true that Jews are the chosen people. God loved them and God set them apart and God saved them through numerous empires and plagues and escaping from Egypt and putting them through the desert but saving them and giving them provisions and all of that. But I didn't understand, you know, until we got into the New Testament where Jesus is born and where up until 30 he was just a normal guy, I assume he didn't get in trouble much maybe, but you know, he was just a normal guy and everyone saw him as Joseph's son. And then he gets baptized by the Holy Spirit and he begins his ministry. And then the Jews as a whole do not accept him. Uh, the Pharisees were obviously intimidated by him or um, threatened by him but they were all against him. They did not see that he was the Messiah that was written about in all the Old Testament. So they are totally against him. And that's all prophesied in the Old Testament. So obviously God, who knows everything that's gonna happen, knew they weren't going to accept him. And so that was already in the Old Testament. Isaiah 53, for example, talks about the crucifixion. But as a whole, the Jewish community was not accepting Jesus as the Savior and the Messiah. And that then God selects Saul, who was a very anti-Christian. He was prosecuting the Christians, putting them in prisons, I guess killing them, and standing by when they do get killed. Um, like Stephen was stoned to death. and. Saul held the coats of the people that were stoning him. So, but then they have that awakening and Saul is blinded uh, and Jesus basically asks him, why are you prosecuting me? And Jesus chose him to share the word, to share the gospel, to teach the Gentiles and open the door to Gentiles. So here was Mr. Jew, Mr. You know, Pharisee educated to the hilt who t suddenly switched sides, now believes that Jesus is the Messiah and begins teaching, being one of the foremost contributors to the Bible. And so you kind of see how that's when the Gentiles started being grafted in to the vine, as they say in the Bible, and that the door was being opened for everyone to be saved. And but that just took some time. I mean, then circumcision, you start seeing how that played into existence. And, um, and again, Israel as a country, I think someone said it was only about the size of New Jersey. And yet, after all these years, the Jewish people as a people and Israel as a country exist. Rome doesn't. 
Greece, Athens, the Egyptian Empire, Aztec, Mayan, all of these sophisticated empires fell away. They don't exist. And yet this small world, this little country that God chose and said is his, and this group of people that he chose and said he would, there would be remnants that would be there through revelation, that they would be his people till the end. You see how that all plays in now. And I just didn't get that before. I just didn't, didn't see it. And so now that I see it, I, I, I am concerned about Israel and I'm fascinated by, like there's a, some videos, I think it's the six, six days of Israel something. I'll have to do it in another video, but there's the miracles that, that there were so many times Israel should have been destroyed and God came in and miraculously saved the day. And, and I think when you see those stories from soldiers and even the enemy soldiers who saw angels protecting the Israelis and, you know, it's just more and more evidence to strengthen the story of the Bible and how it is still real and it does play to all of our histories and it makes it even more fascinating, I guess, than I ever thought it was. But that's it for today. As always, grab your cup of tea, sit back, and let's start sharing. Until next time, bye-bye. And if you haven't, start reading the Bible. It's eye-opening. Bye-bye.